Hey guys, welcome back, and welcome if you're new. Hello, my name is Sarah. I make lots of What's for Dinner videos. I also make lots of plus size fashion, lifestyle, mommy content, beauty, decorating, any of that stuff. So if any of that strikes your fancy, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below. And also follow me here on Instagram, at Sarah England. Today's video is going to be a giant What's for Dinner video. These are just meals that I've made over the past couple months, from Thanksgiving all the way through the new year, because I haven't posted it at What's for Dinner since October. So this first meal is actually a breakfast casserole. It is a copycat cracker barrel hash brown bake so I just chopped up an onion with very poor editing and I'm taking a whole can of cream of chicken soup and popping that on top as well as just seasoning it with pepper I don't believe I added a bunch of extra seasonings mostly just pepper and then cheese I always add more cheese than what the recipe says but I start with recipe and continue to add on I'm also taking some sour cream mixing that all together. I also took some chunks of um, pre-cooked ham and then these Simply Potatoes. These are in the refrigerated section. They aren't frozen so they are really good to cook with. I really like them for that reason. They make fresh nice hash browns. Next I'm just taking um, my egg that have been beaten and put them put that on top give it a good mix and put it in my baking dish and covering it with cheese once again I cover it with some more cheese next time I would leave this in for a bit longer so it got a bit crunchier and a bit more um, cooked through. It was cooked through, but just a little bit more crunchy. But other than that, this was delicious. Everybody loved it. My kids loved it. My family loved it. And we had it for Thanksgiving breakfast, and it was really good. So this is a really great one to keep in the back of your pocket for special occasions or just for, you know, a Sunday brunch or just a Sunday dinner or what have you. Um, and we had it with cinnamon rolls, and it was delicious, and I highly recommend it. Of course, I will try to make sure I link all the recipes that I used down below so you can refer back to them because I am not very good at talking through these. But this was just Thanksgiving morning. It was a hard morning. It was our first Thanksgiving without our dad, so it was definitely hard. But it was a great day, and we were really thankful just to be together. Next, I am making homemade spaghettios. This recipe is actually from Kristen Step, and it's so easy and so cheap. So I'm just taking ditalini pasta with some tomato sauce, and guys, that's about it. I use seasoning and a splash of milk, and you're good to go. I'm just um, boiling my noodles. These are the perfect size for homemade spaghettios. Put in some butter. Then I pop in a whole can of the tomato sauce. I actually ended up using the jumbo can because I used the whole box of noodles. Um, but I used the whole can of tomato sauce and then mix it in together and get that sauce kind of simmering away. And then I'm going to add a ton of seasoning, garlic salt, garlic powder, a little bit of salt and pepper, some sugar to sweeten up the spaghetti sauce because that's what spaghettios are, a little bit sweeter, some milk. I mix it all in together, make sure I like the seasonings and just taste as I go, and then let it simmer on the stove for about 10-15 minutes so all of those flavors really develop. And there you have it. We had it with grilled cheese and this was so good. I loved it. My kids loved it. My husband loved it. It was great for leftovers and really cheap and perfect for kids lunches. Next this is my husband's and my um, fourth wedding anniversary and so we went to one of our favorite restaurants which is a sushi restaurant called Koda. If you live in the DFW area you have to try it. It is amazing and they have a roll called the nacho roll which is the best sushi I've ever had. It is so good. This isn't like sashimi or anything. It's actual roll but it is so good. You have to try it if you're ever in the area or you live around here in general. You will not be disappointed. But um, we just had such a good night out. We haven't had a night out for so long and it was so nice just to celebrate with one another. We got drinks and our rolls and we were happy little campers but this is what the nacho roll looks like. Guys, I'm, my mouth is watering just looking at this. It is so good. You have to try it. It is amazing, and you will not be disappointed. So, Coda, check it out. They're great. We also got another roll. It was similar to like a Philadelphia roll, but a little bit better. Also really good, but nothing beats the nacho roll. Making a chicken dish tonight. I've made this before on my channel. It's from Mandy in the making. It was a subby supper she did few months back I've made it before and it is exceptional you guys have to make it if you haven't tried it it's really easy basically I'm making the sauce for it um you take mayo I'm using dukes some uh salt I'm using Himalayan pink sea salt from Trader Joe's some pepper some garlic powder mix it up in a bowl then you're just excuse me then you're just gonna take a big bag of great value french fried onions you can use the Oscar Mayer or French's or whatever the one, <laughs> the known brand is. And um, all you're gonna do is just smash this bad boy up and get it nice and crumbly. And you're basically going to dredge some raw chicken breast in the mayo on both sides and then put top them with the French fried onions on both sides. 
pop them in a pan for three or uh, 350 for about 20 30 minutes depending how the thickness is and call it a day and that's what we're gonna do so this is how they should look i'm gonna put these in for about 20 minutes and then kind of check and see how they're doing um and yeah and then i'm gonna get started on the sides um, but I'll probably cut a little pieces up for the girls to have on the side and then Jazz and I'll just have whatever's left. So I'm going to pop these in the oven, like I said, about around 350. Enjoy my glass of wine. There's nothing better than cooking, listening to music, and drinking wine in the kitchen. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I love a good glass of red while I'm cooking and listening to my music. Ugh, it's just perfect part of my like alone time. It's my self-care. <laughs> anyway, okay, popping these in the oven. Next, I'm just going to chop up the zucchini. <laughs> I'm just going to chop up the zucchini um, and put a little bit of butter in a pan, melt it with some seasoning, and call it a day. I freaking love this. I could eat like a zucchini for my whole meal. None of my family likes it, but I continue to put it on their plates and hoping that they get some sort of nu nutrients in. But um, if you haven't done zucchini in a pan, just pan fried with a little bit of butter. You could even switch it up for healthier options. Um, some coconut oil, whatever you want to do. And put, that was my pan. And then put um, some seasoning on it. You're missing out, friends. Try it, it is so good. This is probably the most basic thing in the world, but I hadn't tried it up until I tried this recipe. And I continue to do it like all the time because I think it is so good and so quick and so easy. So I'm gonna chop this up and pop it in a pan. So we got our zucchini going. The great thing about zucchini is it pretty much cooks itself. It's super easy. I mean, I just put it on a pot and it goes and does its thing while I'm worrying about everything else. So I literally just melted some garlic and butter in here, then added more garlic powder because you can't get enough, am I right? And then added some salt and pepper, pretty much the exact same seasoning I put on the chicken. It is what it is. I would put Cajun seasoning on it, but I'm trying to get my kids to eat it and I don't want it to be too spicy. So I may add that at the end because I think it'd be kind of fun to kick it up a notch. <laughs> Let's get a fun with zucchini. Anyway, so um, that's going. I just have a pot of water on to boil because then we are going to have this macaroni and cheese spirals um, on the side because I know my kids and my husband will eat this, the least healthy option, but uh, at least I'll provide some options on the side for healthiness. And that's what we're doing. So I will show you when everything's plated and ready to go. So here is how it turned out. Everything was really good. I took half of a chicken breast and then cut um, a good chunk up for the girls. And there's still a little bit left right there. Um, and I put some Cajun seasoning on my zucchini and then the mac and cheese. And that is what's for dinner tonight. It looks really good. All right, guys, this next meal is my impress you meal. This is my go-to lasagna meal. This is my go-to meal in general. This is such a good lasagna. I highly recommend it. It's a great way to sneak veggies in for your kids and or your husband. But basically, you want onion, bell peppers, however little or however much if you want of both. And we're just going to saute them and cook them down in a lot of garlic. Once those are softened, we're going to add them to our meat mixture. I'm using ground turkey, but you can use ground beef, ground pork, what have you. Whichever one you prefer, whichever one you have on hand and we're gonna mix those together and kind of marry the flavors. Then we're gonna go ahead and add two jars of our tomato sauce. Now, I use the Great Value traditional pasta sauce. It's really inexpensive and it tastes really good, but we're not leaving it just there. We are definitely doctoring it up. You guys laugh when I say this, but um, that's what my mom has always said. She always said her doctoring up her recipes. So we're doctoring it up and we're gonna use lots of different spices and lots of different sauces just to kind of add a little bit of zing. So I'm using garlic powder, lots and lots of powder to add a little peppery kick, some salt, some onion powder. We use Worcestershire sauce. We use um, sugar, which I know a lot of you also really disagree with, but you just add a bunch of that in there. Honestly, this is kind of like eyeballing most of it and then I just kind of taste as I go and see what it needs and what it doesn't need um, but as you can see I'm just mixing all it in and then I let it simmer for a while on the stove to really get those flavors to come out and this sauce is so robust and so good I am then taking my cream cheese we're using cream cheese instead of ricotta I use two blocks of cream cheese this is the first block I soften it up in the microwave 
and kind of get it nice and creamy and then I add a little bit of Parmesan cheese um, in it to kind of add a little bit more salty and nuttiness and then we're taking a small spoonful of the meat mixture just to kind of soften it up a little bit more so it's a little bit easier to spread and then we're gonna um, make our lasagna so I'm taking a little bit of the meat mixture to put on the bottom so the noodles don't stick I boil my own noodles I never use the pre made or pre-baked ones um, because they never work for me. I boil mine and then I make my lovely little lasagna so I'm adding my layers of noodles then a layer a nice layer of meat sauce and then instead of adding a noodle and adding like my cream cheese mixture i'm putting that on top of the meat sauce i want to create identify I, as much as an identifiable layer as i can so i'm spreading it on top i'm not mixing it really really well into that meat sauce because i still want it to be very well known that there's a cream cheese layer in there but this just helps everything mix together it doesn't create stickiness with the noodles nothing's dry it's perfect and it is so good once i made a number of layers um i will then go ahead and top it off with my cheese. I'm using mozzarella cheese first and then I'm using the rest of whatever was in that parmesan bag to top it on off and I pop it in the oven for about 20 minutes until it's nice and bubbly and there you go. This is the best lasagna. It is so good and honestly you can switch out different veggies and use what you like but this is um, a recipe from my best friend and I've since kind of tweaked it and made it my own and literally anybody I make this for loves it. It is so good. Your cream cheese is just a different element from the ricotta. Highly recommend you try it out you will not be disappointed. We just had salad on the side, and my kids love this, my husband loves this, the rest of my family loves it. You'll see my brother is even like shaking his head because he is a very picky um, little chef judge over there, and he's even really loving it too. So I definitely recommend it. It is a crowd pleaser and a crowd favorite, and I love it. And it's pretty easy to make, and it always is great for leftovers. And this we, night we had um, Irish coffees. My brother made some and we watched Christmas movies and it was great and magical and I loved it. And then this night was actually um, Christmas Eve. So I'm making my sausage balls. I've made this before on my channel. Super easy, you need biscuit, cream cheese, cheddar cheese, and hot sausage. Definitely recommend the hot sausage. It will not make it spicy, but it'll add flavor. If you don't use the hot sausage, it'll be really bland. Um, so I definitely recommend having the hot because it adds just a little bit of a pepperiness. It is not spicy. My mom can't handle any spice and she can pop these in her mouth with no problem. So basically we're just adding all the ingredients together. I will leave the recipe linked below that I use. We're adding all of the ingredients together I always use a little bit more cheese than it calls for but I do that with every recipe <laughs> and I'm using this in my mixer but you can use this um, you can mix them with your hands I've done both ways but I'm just using the dough hook honestly this wasn't that much easier than my hands it just was less messy and then I'm just gonna form them into about like one to two inch balls and pop them on my little pan and then we are good to go they're gonna go in the oven for about 20 minutes and there you have them like I said, this was Christmas Eve. I did film a huge vlog and I just never uploaded it. It was a hard Christmas this year without my dad, but I would just have little sneak peeks. We were headed our way to church. Christmas Eve has always been a really big deal for my family growing up. This is when we did our biggest Christmas celebration. We would go to mass and then we would come home and have a chippy dippy party, which is what you'll see, just a bunch of different random assortments of food. And we would all open our presents from one another and then go to sleep and Santa would come. Um, and so we still stick to that same tradition, except we open our family presents the next all morning. Right. We are home, ready for our party. We got our usual punch. This has vodka, champagne, ginger ale, cherry or pink lemonade, a bunch of other hey, stuff. Hey, 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 can't be giving the family recipe away. Yeah, <laughs> that's a punch. Well, I didn't say the quantities. We got. You need to edit that out. We got rolls. That's a punishable offense. We have brisket, ooh, and sausage. I actually got a free more sausage. More brisket, barbecue sauce, potato salad, fake potato, baked potato casserole, meatballs, chips and dip, baby wash. And then little sausage balls that I made that looks like they've been eaten. Oh, I thought you'd be a good boy. And they turned out really good. 
Well, you already saw my little um, showing it off, but basically this is what I had. And then we go ahead and clean everything up and open presents together. And it was a good night, but it was also a really hard night. We also cried a lot. So it's another reason why I just haven't shared those vlogs. Those vlogs were really personal this year. So fingers crossed next year I will finally post my Christmas vlogs. Um, I just, for whatever reason, every year I don't do it. But this night um, we are making a recipe that I've got from Chris and Steph. I've made it multiple times before, and these are my ranch potatoes, or her ranch potatoes, I should say, but basically, I just take um, yellow Dutch potatoes and I quarter them. If they're a bit bigger, then I will cut them into six chunks instead of four, um, but then I just pop them in a bowl and get going. I like to use the whole bag, and these things actually heat up, reheat pretty well. Potatoes don't normally do that, but these actually heat up um, really well the next day or whenever you want to eat them um, and so I'm just popping them all into a big bowl and then you're going to want to take some olive oil um, once again you want to get them evenly coated so they'll get nice and crispy but you don't want to over dredge them in oil so I'm just taking my olive oil and then a giant heaping spoonful of garlic if you have watched me long enough and in this video you should know that I love me some garlic so we're taking um, a lot of garlic and then we are also taking um, salt and pepper but for whatever reason I didn't film that clip we take a little bit of salt and pepper and then ranch I don't use a whole entire ranch packet um, but I do use a good three-fourths to half to three-fourths then we're just gonna mix it all together and then you're popping it on the baking sheet for like 30 minutes these are so yummy and delicious next we're making this Italian chicken and vegetables you need honey balsamic vinegar and Italian dressing and it did call for chili red pepper flakes but um, I couldn't find mine so instead I am actually doubling the recipe so I'm taking half a cup of the Italian dressing I just use great value and it was really delicious but if you have a particular one you like go ahead and use that one then I'm taking about two tablespoons of um, honey once again I kind of just went back and tasted it and decided what I thought it needed more of I love doing that and I obviously think that's like up to you and what your family likes um, I'm then taking some balsamic vinegar and just mixing it together it looks like squiddy it looks real weird <laughs> but I'm just mixing that all together and then we're gonna start cooking our chicken breasts um, next time I definitely would use either less oil or um, definitely like drain the oil before I popped in the dressing um, just because it didn't want to really solidify as much as I would like it because of the oil that was already in the pan but it still tasted really good and still got evenly cooked in it and coated and you can definitely taste the flavors but it didn't get glazy which is what I was hoping for. Anyway, so I'm just cooking those two or three chicken breasts. I just salt and peppered them and now they are resting and I am just gathering my veggies. I'm doing cherry tomatoes, um, minced carrots, and or mashed carrots and um, asparagus, popping a little bit more of that sauce down and I'm popping my veggies in. Here's where I messed up again. Definitely put your asparagus down first, then your carrots, then your tomatoes. The tomatoes got blistered way too fast, so they got a little mushy. They still tasted great, but they weren't um, hard or anything at all really and um but I cooked those together and then this is how it all came out. It was super delicious, really yummy, really bright and great for this time of year when you're like sick of winter and the winter blues. I really recommend this. This was a tasty recipe. I will have it linked down below. It was really yummy. But that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got a lot of recipe ideas. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to post a new What's For Dinner video, um, but I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. The holidays and life has been crazy. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.